Welcome, Mama, to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Finally, a podcast dedicated just to the mental and emotional world of us postpartum women. I am your friend, fellow mama, and postpartum life coach, Lizzie Langston. After intense birth trauma, delivering my first child, and really scary mental health crises following the birth of my second and third baby, I set off on a six-year journey to understand postpartum mental health from the inside out. On this podcast, I bring you as a mom of four and a certified postpartum life coach, the tools you need to avoid mental health crashes, to get out of the postpartum rut, and to embrace a vivacious motherhood that you love from the inside out. Let's get you feeling like yourself again, mama, and welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. My name is Lizzie. I'm your postpartum life coach. I'm a mom of four kids and it is truly my joy to sit here and write these episodes. I've been in my office today the last couple hours writing, recording, writing, recording, and I sit there and meditate and I ask the goddess, (laughs) what can I show the moms? What do moms need? And I try to connect to all of you guys and create episodes that will genuinely uplift you and help you. So if you want to thank me for that work that I spend my time doing, which I I do it gladly because I genuinely feel called to it, but if you want to give me a little thank you, the best way that you can do that is just leave a written review on Apple Podcasts for my podcast because or share it with a friend or a little bit of both. That really helps drive more women towards my business, which is then advertising that I don't have to pay for. So that's basically you giving back. So thank you. Thanks for being here. If you've never met me, like I said, my name's Lizzie. Um, I just had my fourth baby this last year. And before that, I took six years off of having kids to really understand and dive deep into women's mental health in uh, through life coaching, through learning from shamans and healers. We lived in Costa Rica for a while. I um, worked with plant medicine. I've worked with ancestral coaches, and I've just done so many things, gathered so many tools and resources. Right now, I'm studying with a priestess and learning the sacred feminine and how that was lost. And that actually brings me to today's topic, which is how the erasure and the loss of the sacred feminine, and I will explain what that is if you don't know what it is or feel unfamiliar with that concept, impacts women in motherhood today and specifically postpartum, but always. A reminder that postpartum, when I say postpartum, it's any time after you have a baby. Definitely that first 12 to 18 months after you have a baby, but even three, four years, some women even 10 years after their last most recent baby, they're still still working through <laughs> postpartum issues, birth trauma, um, trauma from nursing that was very painful or didn't go well, the trauma from just being so needed all the time and not having had the tools or the support that they would have needed. So I just want you to know if you are older than you would consider postpartum or you don't exactly identify with the term postpartum, then you still belong here. And this podcast can still be an amazing resource for you to do the healing that maybe you had to put off until your babies were older. So you are also welcome here as well. And the older moms too, moms in their 40s, late 30s, especially early 40s or mid 40s, I want you to know how welcome you are. Same gender mamas uh, in same gender relationship with uh, or unpartnered moms, moms who don't have a partner, Moms of all kinds, types, background, um, you're welcome here. Mothers of color, um, all moms are welcome here. And I just wanted to reiterate that. My kids, by the way, will be getting home from school any minute, and they typically come in and pop in and say hi. I was going to put off recording this, but I was just so excited for this topic, so you may just hear them come in. Okay, let's first start with what is the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine is the way that human beings live when they are connected to feminine energy. And you could even say divine, feminine divine, or divine feminine. But if you're not into like thinking of there being deities or divine beings, you could just think of it as feminine energy, okay? And all humanity from the origins of time worshipped a goddess. The very first city when human beings stopped being wander gatherers and they started actually congregating around one spot and building homes and using the same land over and over to grow different crops and having a variety of crops locally to them. We didn't used to do that. We used to be wanderers and gatherers and we would kind of move place to place. When they stopped doing that, ancient Mesopotamia, that was the first and oldest city that we know about. 
And in the ruins of ancient Mesopotamia, they have actually found tons of statues, little little statues used for worship as they've done the research. And I don't have it all right in front of me, but um, presumably this goddess was worshipped. And so um, statues of the goddess were everywhere. And she was a big, round woman, um, huge fertile midsection, beautiful large breasts. You can Google like ancient Mesopotamia goddess statue and check it out. Curvy to say the least, okay? And her fertility was celebrated. And and I got to teach you about just the goddess worshipped, the goddess worshipped to set the stage for what the feminine used to be to humans and then how it was deliberately lost in a, or not lost, but erased, Um, both from our consciousness and also, um, worship and and even just our worldview and our relation to the earth. Okay, so ancient Mesopotamia, um, goddess statues, curvy, fertility was celebrated. Her fatness was a sign of that fertility and her power of creation. And really, the extension was that all creation was seen as something that kind of descended from the goddess, and all creation was connected to the goddess, including humans. In ancient Egypt, heaven was thought to be a woman's body. So their concept of heaven was actually a womb. They would return naked after death to this womb in spirit, to this womb of the great goddess. And then she there would put their parts back together in spirit. Um, When was the last time you heard people talk about returning to the womb of the great mother after death, right? When is the last time you heard a woman pray in the name of the goddess um, or the great mother, right? Like many of our indigenous ancestors did. Hi, baby. I'll be out in a minute. Let <laughs> me go inside and grab a snack. Okay. So, when was the last time that you heard uh, somebody pray to the goddess, right, or or mother god, or anything like that? I think you know there are there's like the Virgin Mary that some Catholics um, identify with and see as sort of the divine feminine representation, um, but that's about all that I've heard about in modern day. So now let's talk about the sacred feminine and what that is. So the sacred feminine is the way that we see everything when we are connected to feminine energy is sacred. And so we call it the sacred feminine. And so this is like a lifeline when you're connected to and your masculine and feminine energies are balanced, which um, I hold that they are imbalanced in today's society, that we are in a more masculine dominated, dominating society, that we value the qualities of masculine energy being linear progression and, you know, fixing things versus holding space for them to unfold naturally. Um, Linear progression versus cyclical, which would be like our menstrual cycle that's feminine. So anyway, there's so much more I could say about that. But the sacred feminine is, for example, I'll just list some examples, ritual. Ritual for everything. Rituals for death, right? A funeral. We have some remnants, right? Um, Rituals for celebrating life, birthday, Um, creation, rituals for creation. Um, When you cross the threshold of birthing and becoming a mother or are getting ready to, there are rituals for that. The indigenous Native Americans had a blessing way ceremony. It wasn't a baby shower that was all about giving gifts for the baby. It was about the mother and her crossing of the threshold into motherhood. We've really gotten out of that, but we're making our way slowly to it. I did actually interview somebody who had done a blessing way ceremony in lieu of a baby shower or maybe in addition to a baby shower, and she initiated it of her own accord and invited close women And um, it was really beautiful. So you can go check that out. I think I did that maybe in the last seven, eight months. Sorry, I don't know the exact um, time that I did that, but it's on this podcast. And so I think it's called like, yeah, bless mother's blessing or blessing way, something like that. Okay. So rituals for becoming a mother, ritual for when your cycle starts, rituals for when, um, the seasons of the earth change, okay? So like we really associate Wicca and witches with, you know, you using the wheel of the year and doing things on summer solstice and winter, but, or paganism, but that can also just be a preference by choice of a, a woman who recognizes that nature evolves in seasons, our bodies evolve in seasons. And so why not, you know, be one with those seasons? Um, It doesn't have to be, anti-Christian or anti-Semitic or anything. It can be something that all women can have, even if they don't identify as Wiccan or witches. So, um, but that is part of the sacred feminine is orienting yourself and being present with the changes in the seasons in your life 
um, through ceremony and ritual and even your menstrual cycle. Like I know Lisa Lister, who is a women's menstrual health expert, among many other things. She uh, has a box for each part of her cycle. So each week of her cycle, and there's a different box that has different essential oils and recipes that she goes back to and colors that she's drawn to. We really do go through our own spring, summer, fall, winter as women each month if you have a menstrual cycle. Um, follow, you know, Part of following nature is the new moons and, and full moons, and um, those are such different energies kind of tuning in. Essentially, the feminine is subtle energy. The masculine is the 3D physical realm, right? So think of like the scientific method and, you know, can we measure it? Can we see it? Can we touch it? And then the feminine is the spiritual creation that precedes and complements that physical creation. And we've really lost our understanding of connection to and respect for the feminine. So let's talk about um, how this actually shows up. And I, I, I could say so much more, you know, I've got more notes here like, the sacred feminine is deconditioning yourself from patriarchy and ways that women have been oppressed, waking up to that. It is getting out of autopilot. It is tuning in and having quiet time and listening, not always just talking or doing, but being and resting and being still, taking back womanhood. You know, all things are connect connected and everything is sacred, to just name a few. So there's so much more I could say, but let's talk about now how does this impact postpartum women? So five ways that the loss, the erasure, I guess I didn't really talk about the erasure, but I mentioned it a couple episodes back. Constantine, long story short, when Christianity was kind of up and coming years and years after Christ had done his thing, um, there were lots of different iterations of Christianity. And Constantine was someone who wanted political power, state power. And so he leveraged the religious breakoffs and provided, tried to homogenize Christianity. So he put out the Bible that we know today as the Bible, although there's many different versions, I guess you could say. But in that Bible, deliberately the feminine was not put in. So the goddess worshiping uh, that was, and and even the, the understanding of Mary Magdalene's true identity as an equal partner to Christ and to Jesus and the, the apostle to the apostles. Um, so this authority of women, it was threatening to those who wanted power. It was empowering to women. They wanted to control women and have them be more scared and controllable. So they took out the feminine. And this has left a mark in our psyche, and it still ripples to this day. This was, I mean, started in the 1500s, the 15th century, so the 1400s, I guess. Is that right? Anyway, so five ways it impacts. And by the way, if you're loving this, if you're fascinated, you want to know more, or if you just want to work with me and have my eyes on your growth, your motherhood, your coaching, you can come into my community, lizzylangston.com forward slash community. I also have a lot more resources at lizzylangston.com forward slash work with me. All those links will be in the show notes. Okay, five ways the erasure of the feminine and specifically the lack of contact with the sacred feminine has marked us and still continues to be a disadvantage and create hardship for all humans, but specifically postpartum women. Number one, forgotten self-nurturing. The loss of the sacred feminine meant the loss of feminine archetypes in our collective consciousness. So Carl Jung was a very, he is a very famous, he lived in the 1800s, a, I believe, a Swiss Swiss psychoanalyst. And he said that the mother archetype was swallowed up in the collective unconscious. We, it, it, it didn't get gone. It got kicked to the unconscious, cobwebs, okay, forgotten, not used, um, not even safe to use because of the burning times and the threats uh, to those who were in that way of being. Anyway, so we now, as postpartum women, as we are moms, we have forgotten that while we are moms, we are also still children. So we tend to favor this linear model of you are a child, then you are adult. We tend to emphasize the physical progression, right? Physical is masculine. The spiritual and emotional would be the feminine, the more subtle. You can't see it, right? And so our physical progression leads us to think, oh, now I'm an adult, so I shouldn't struggle with these things. But the feminine knows that we birth and die all throughout our life in cycles. We go through cycles as humans. We're always evolving and changing. And it isn't one linear progression. It, it, we have um, 
younger parts of us, our child selves, that are still operating in our body. And sometimes they come up to our conscious mind, whether we are aware of it or not. And this can look like reverting back to responses or behaviors or fears of our childhood, even as we are an adult, or you know, being locked into patterns or belief systems that we learned as children. And so part of becoming an adult Um, in the emotional aspect is taking out our programming and looking at it. And that is the inner work. We call that inner work. Um, So, you know, outer work on your physique and your physical health, masculine, important, inner work, feminine, also important. And this is also something we very much focus on and I try to compensate for inside of my program, my membership community, Postpartum Freedom. Okay. So number two, the second way that the loss of the feminine, the sacred feminine has impacted and does impact postpartum women and all humanity is a lack of appreciation. So society in general, there's a lack of appreciation for fertility and a celebration of it. There is some, but it is lacking. And specifically what this looks like and how this really hurts us as women is seeing the body as the object of Um, our pride or our worth or a vehicle to increase our social status through marriage or through um, attracting somebody that has a lot of social status with our body or whatever. And I'm not even just saying that's wrong, but it's like this objectification of the body. And so then what that looks like postpartum is the desire for a really quick recovery. Um, And it's normal to grieve the loss of what your body looked like before. But I think that grief is like, a lot bigger than it would be if we were more open to our body ebbing and flowing and changing, which is native to the feminine understanding and outlook on life and, and motherhood. So birthing women and women birth, becoming mothers anciently, their fertility and bodies and changing bodies were celebrated. Like I told you, the statues of the goddess, she was big and round in the middle, huge breasts, um, this was normal and and even attractive. And, you know, the fertility was celebrated. And so um, this can be something that really messes with your mental health postpartum. Um, so also in the workplace, just by extension, I'm just wrapping this one up, but you know, a lack of or no good maternity leave and even paternity leave, and also no rituals when we become a mom, which can really actually mess. I've seen with my clients that their, you know, their self and their identity, who they were before becoming a mother, and then just going into motherhood so fast and not really stopping and just being present with that transition, especially if they got pregnant unexpectedly with their first baby, it can um, really kind of weigh on you and build up. Okay, the third issue or, you know, consequence of the sacred feminine being erased and we losing touch with it is the lost art of womb healing and just general healing knowledge being lost. Women healing women and women being healers. So while modern medicine is amazing, it has definitely saved my life. It's helped me so much. I take an antidepressant. I love managing symptoms with some of the beautiful, awesome things we have in our mainstream medical today, modern. Um, There is a downside, which is that while mamas now can survive birth in ways that they could never before, they live with more survivor's trauma. They live with more trauma of almost having passed away or having really traumatic births than any other time on the planet. And so healing is needed. And that's a lot to unpack. Unpack Now, the womb is in the place of the second chakra. So your chakra system, there's seven chakras. I mean, there's more, but those are the basic ones. And your root chakra and then your, is the base one um, by your vulva and in between your hips. Your second chakra, though, is where your womb is. It's just a couple inches under your navel. It is the sacral chakra, and it is um, orange in color, according to you know scans with machines that can see these things and also humans who have the gift of seeing the energy body and it rec- uh, represents um or it is the center of creation uh both creating human life right with a womb and also just any creation and i remember one time i went on a trip with a really good friend i would say she's an awakened woman she um went to law school it was a, is an amazing lawyer top of a class and then she stopped everything to have babies and at the time it was like for sure by choice but as she looks back she can see how how much her religion and her social conditioning primed her to just like completely let go of her career and definitely gave her a sense of moral high ground um being a full-time stay at home drop everything for your babies type of mom and while i don't criticize that choice she just was feeling grief about it as we you know now her old, uh, youngest child is in school and i remember naturally she asked me naturally as she was literally crying and angry and just like processing this together and 
um, asked me if I would do a womb clearing and a womb reclamation ceremony where she could take back um, her choice on what she spends her creative energy creating. And it can be a career. And a career is just as viable and equal as creating children or a family. And um, so that's one of the, you know, womb healing things, womb reclamation, womb clearing, womb healing, um, clearing trauma from the womb. Or if you lost a baby, you know, the grief and um, the remnants or the life force that that, you know, just just processing all of that. And that is something that, that postpartum women really need. And it was totally lost. Now, this is definitely something that I am doing my best to be open as a vessel to the feminine divine to learn, to restore, restoring the feminine and this art of womb healing. It's something that I've worked with older women than myself and wise women to help learn. And it is something that I want to bring into my sacred um, postpartum membership as well as in real life. I would love to do uh, in-person womb healing. But anyway, that is just another thing that is missing. Number four, the fourth thing is a lost understanding of how feminine energy manifests. Um, so if you've never heard of it, there is, there's this idea that there's masculine and feminine in all things, the yin and the yang. And uh, humans are in masculine and feminine, but a lot of the feminine energy went dormant in the last 20 generations when the the burning times happened and women became really suppressed and uh, society really valued masculine energy. And so we're coming out of that now. It's getting more balanced now. But um, what's happening is since 2020, the consciousness of the planet has shifted a lot. And now a lot of people are starting to have spiritual awakenings and they're starting to have what's called a kundalini awakening. I'm not going to go in depth here. You can Google what is a kundalini awakening. I have had one. I didn't solicit one. I didn't know what it was. I remember as part of it one day, I was in the, between the dream time, you know, this between sleeping and awakening, like waking up for the morning. And I saw the the kundalini, the symbol for kundalini, kundalini energy, which is a staff with a serpent around it. And I didn't know what that was. I just saw it in my third eye. And then I went and Googled it and figured out that that's what spirit was trying to tell me as I was experiencing my kundalini energy. Um, and it was actually really disruptive. It's like, oh, a spiritual awakening. That sounds nice. And it sounds like you're so, you know, it would be a really good thing. It was actually hellish for like three years because I was like, what is happening to me? And my whole worldview changed. I lost the religion I grew up in because I couldn't unsee what I perceived to be illusions that I could now see and uh, mistruths. And it was super hard because my whole social circle was built around that religion and that culture. And so anyway, it was disruptive. And I actually think that this is something that because the baby comes out through your root chakra or through cesarean comes out through your sacral chakra, that this is something that is really actually a thing for postpartum women recovering from birth. And we're not talking about it because we're disconnected from the feminine and the subtle energy body. But I do think as a healer that this is something that needs to be tended to. And it's just something that I keep in the back of my mind when I hear women talking about their anxiety um, or the ways that their thoughts and their body and everything is changing or their dreams and um, just their spiritual sensitivity. This is something that I keep in mind. And then the very fifth and final is the mother wound. The final way that the sacred feminine being erased has hurt us is the mother wound. So we all have the mother wound, all humans, the divine feminine and her sacred ways that were known to and celebrated by all of our ancestors were erased deliberately. Like I told you, in an effort to control the masses. Um, and so this is, that was the origins of what then unfolded for decades and decades and centuries to be the patriarchy, which is just a, a valuing of the masculine over the feminine and imbalance in those energies. So specifically, this meant that many women, especially those lineages who carried powerful women healers and shamans to wisdom and wisdom keepers, they stopped sharing that knowledge with their daughters and their nieces and with each other because there were scary and life-threatening consequences like torture and drowning and burning. Um, or getting your land taken away and being put in jail. And then they had to pay for being in jail. And then they would, they'd be like, okay, we'll let you out. But then they had tons of debt that they owed to the state. And then they were like, oh, well, we'll bail out your debt by taking your land. So go be homeless, even though you're out of jail. So there was just a lot of manipulation from the church and state at that time um, to, because the leaders that were doing things at that time wanted control. And so women stopped healing to say it, to, to survive. Okay. And our health care system became linear and secular and the spiritual was wiped from it as with many other things. And it's making a comeback though, but, um, and my, pro my program is doing its part to contribute, but yeah. 
And then healing, healing became mostly run by men. I'm, I'm kind of whoo, cruising through these notes because I, I actually wrote a lot. I actually know a lot about this and it's a passion of mine. So this is something I can definitely talk to you more about inside of my program. It's something I will definitely break down a lot more in my program. But um, basically the way I see this impacting women postpartum, okay, is that women became more domestic and less um, in, ta- in contact with their sensuality and their body. So they became less embodied. They became more mind, mind-centered, mind head-centered in their heads. Um, they started to pattern themselves socially after men as men carried the most value and power. So that was a way that they could kind of borrow power from men as being more masculine. And this is something that we haven't been aware of, but it has been pushed down in our lineages. Now, studies have shown that the sort of the, um, descendants of survivors of the Holocaust, or even those who were descendants that survived, even though their great-great-grandparents in the Holocaust didn't survive, um, lineages that were in the Holocaust do have more anxiety and depression, among other things. I can't quote that study to you. I just remember reading it one time. Um, And so this epigenetic uh, evolution is real. And What I'm trying to say is that the way that women were suppressed during way worse, more patriarchal times than even we have today still lives on and does impact. And I think that when we birth children, a lot of that old ancient um, trauma is rattled and kind of comes up. So if you want another episode that tells you more about that, the generational healing that comes up postpartum, um, there's just like three or four episodes back. It's called The Four Root Causes of Postpartum Anxiety. That is one of my most lip- listened to episodes. I looked at it the other day. It just released two weeks ago. It has like almost a thousand listens. That's not usual for my podcast So um, at this point. So it's a good one, apparently. <laughs> but um, so what this looks like for moms I serve, like I said, is... Um, I have a lot of clients whose moms were very emotionally unavailable and a lot of neglect and avoidance and an overfocus on the body and using marriage um, as a way to stay financially safe because they were cut off from finances and disempowered financially or disadvantaged by the system of patriarchy financially. Um, And then a lot of just disempowered women raising girls who then become moms and we moms can sometimes struggle to adjust to motherhood, not realizing that a big reason why is that our inner child was not loved or nurtured as much as she needed because our mom's inner child wasn't because her mom wasn't because they were all just trying to survive the freaking patriarchy and the patriarchal rule and the danger for being um, the fairer sex back in those times. So I know this was a lot. We took a little, you know, we took some turns down into history, but hopefully this really opens you up to realize that it's more than just oh, I don't feel good postpartum. Something about having a baby messed with me. Can you help me? It's like, oh, honey, sit down. Like, come into the membership. Let me really help you understand so that not only can you feel better because I I believe you deserve to. That's why I started my business in the first place. But also you can become, you know, a real emotional adult and an empowered woman that can then go on to see this stuff. And when you see it, then you don't be in it the same way then you are not in it the same way. It doesn't have the same power over you. And you are then empowered to make change, to break the patterns, to overcome the systemic um, suppression of our gender over the ages and that lives maybe in your lineage, the results of it live in your lineage, and um, how to really free yourself of that, unburden yourself of that for the sake of the generations to come, including your daughter or your kids. So that's my intention. I'm just here. I'm just a healer and I'd love to help you heal. So all of the links are in the show notes. You can come join my membership. Um, you can always email me, lizzie at lizzielangston.com. And don't forget to leave a review on this podcast if this was helpful to you. Wow, I would so appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we'll talk to you right here next week. Share with a friend. Love you. Bye. Mama, friend, sister, hi, it's Lizzie. I am so grateful that you chose my podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I want you to know that I have more help for you, more hands-on help to uplift you and support you, including a free text message series, as well as a popular free mini course moms love. It's called Get Out of the Postpartum Rut. I also have a coaching membership community for postpartum moms. 
You can check out all of these at lizzylangston.com forward slash work with me. That's Lizzie, L-I-Z-Z-I-E, Langston, L-A-N-G-S-T-O-N.com forward slash work with me. I'd be honored if you checked out any of my stuff and thank you again for listening. You are stronger than you know.